Hi, I'm Lassie and I'm teaching people in metal shaping and you probably have seen my video before. It's 157, this will be 158. So on this video I'm going to show you a little about what we have done in the Step 2 class. And the Step 2 classes, I didn't do them for since 2015 was the last year. I took a break and this year 2022 I brought them back again and uh, we you have seen a video before with the 33 roadster that we built and uh, now i switched so we built a 32 three window coupe from scratch so here you can see uh, what the student did from flat sheet mill uh, in five days for students and uh, so what had been done is the side of the cow the top of the cow two pieces the door skins on both sides and the window door window frames the door window frame is made in one piece so it's no welding on that one at all it's going to be a 90 degrees angle that goes in and then go down and that's going to be for flush to the glass that one will be welded in but the outer uh, shape here it's one piece so I figured that out how to do that and I made one first so I could see uh, and find out if it was any, any difficult area that I need to figure out before the class. But everything was pretty straightforward so it, it came out really nice. It was a little tricky to stretch the corners here because they are so sharp. 33, 34, 4 is more round so that is easier to do. They made the, the rear corners, and the, what I call it the B-pillar, and, and then uh, the rear quarter panel, the sides, and the top piece. They also made the rear window, the top part, and the bottom part, and the piece makes, there was a uh, forward, uh, the deck lid. I'm going to film that each piece so you can see what we have done with those pieces. I bought the deck lid from uh, Brookwell so I could make a jig and I'm going to film the jig so you can see that as well. But I needed to find out where the four corners going to be so we could build everything around it. And to be able to do that I needed the panel below the deck lid and have the gas tank and I'm going to film that so you can see that. And I'm going to show you that and then I could set the deck lid uh, from that panel and and everything is square next in the center of the frame and the only thing I need to find out then was the height in the front for the, the corners of the deck front corners of the deck lid but it's pretty pretty amazing it's fun fun to, to be able to not only for me to know how to do this but also to teach other people so other people can do the same thing and i like the hot rods but it doesn't mean that you need to build a hot rod but you can learn from all those steps and and how i set it up so you can use that for other projects or other cars that you would like to build or if it's your own design of a car the firewall is the zero point. That's where we start. And then we making we made this piece and then when that was done after the templates then we could clamp that to the firewall and then we made the door and then we attached the door to the cow and then we had the big strong magnets and then hold the whole door, adjust the gap, adjust the, the bead. And then we could tack well that together, that, that is solid. I also needed to adjust inside, and I'm going to show you that. Inside with a cross member, so I could adjust the width of the, the car here from to the, to the other side. So let's take a little look what we had to start with, because we need to have some templates to start with. We can't just start making the pot. So it's many, many, many weeks of preparation full time for me 
before I can run a step two class. It's not that I can open the door on Monday morning and open the, start the class. No, it takes lots of thoughts and time and make templates, lay out, cut out the metal. So if you see it on the video there, you can see a pile of, of flat sheet metal that is for the next week's step two class. So we're going to make another one of those bodies. So let's take a look at what we had to start with. So it's, it's always good to, or it, it's, it's necessary, you must have something to look at when you're going to make something. It's really difficult to make a 32 or 3 window coupe from, from um, pictures, for example. It may be going to look like a 32 Ford, but it's not that. So uh, I got this uh, half 32 3 window coupe fiberglass car. I have no history why somebody cut it in half, but it is cut in half and for me it was great because it takes up less space. And so what I did is that I started with the tape and did all the layouts on this one. And uh, I'm going to show you a little quick here what how big pieces it is. Uh, I will make a note here now that the pieces is not small like this and then welded together. No, it's one piece. So that piece here, for example, it goes from this red line in the middle of that bead and it's go to about the 716 above the bead on the ray quarter panel. So this whole thing is one piece down to there. The rear corner is here. The top of the roof, the side of the roof, on one on each side, go from here and it's all the way to here. The window door frame is one piece and then the door skin from here and down is one piece. The rear quarter panel from that red line there, just above the bead and down is one piece. The rear inner fender going to be made in two pieces but when it's weld into the car it's one piece so we make that in the side and the top that's how we can make it faster instead of trying to shrink all this four inches deep and it's a lot so work out to do that so um, then the deck lid we have no problem to make that so that that's something we can make in the class and um, but to make the jig, I, I bought that Brookwell deck lid so I could make the jig. That's the only thing, the reason for, uh, why I'm, I bought that one. But the deck lid can be made in one piece in the English wheel, bend the flanges in the, in the bead drawer. The bottom piece here is, can be one piece all over to the other side. The rear window it's one piece from here down to there and then it's one piece down to here and uh, no, this piece here go all the way down to the middle of the bead and then this part here is up to half of the bead I prefer to do the weld in the middle of there then I have little flexibility and it's easy to hammer and dolly and it does it makes it strong when I weld it in the center there not so much distortion because I have this round bead and, and then the cow piece is in one piece and then the top of the cow is one piece the A pillar will be one on each side and the front of the roof will be one side over to the other side there and if we have time we can fill the roof and we can do that in one piece so that's a little how we split that I divided the, the, the body in sections. Here you can see how I did the layout for the rear quarter pen. And this tells me how far I in I need to go in and, and shrink it. So it's not that I'm shrinking here, there, there and there. It's it's little all the way, but you see how the paper overlap. <coughs> and once I have that then I can take that 
and um, put that on the sheet metal and then I can cut this out. So this gives me the size of the panel, the shape of the panel that I start with. Then the rear corner, I make a paper template for this. Same thing, always do the paper layout and you can find out what size of the panel, where you need to shrink or stretch. On the bottom here, when I bend that flange out, it needs to be stretched. Up here, it needs to be shrunk. And I prefer to go halfway here and halfway there and weld it in, in, the, in the radius. It's so much easier to, to line them up. And instead of going all the way up to here with this piece and this going to be a really, really, really tall convex shape, uh, it's much better to do it that I can do it faster that way. And then we have the roof panel. And the same thing here. I cut in with a scissor until the bubbles sh uh, disappear. That tells me how far in I need to shrink it. But I need to be consistent all over this one when I shrink it with a deep shrinker. And if I can't reach in enough with five and a half inch deep in, I can always roll this up a little bit more that will help me to get the right shape. And from this paper I can add for the flange whatever I need to add. Same thing on the piece that for the deck lid here, or for the ray quarter panel that I'm bending this down. I'm adding that from, from my paper template. So remember that about the, the, the paper layout. Always do that you save so much time and it makes it so much easier for yourself when you make the panels. So let's take a little look at the sheet metal that they have done in the step two class. So here you can see the, the sheet metal parts that we start putting together as, uh, as a car body. Um, before each step two class, I, I don't know how long time each panel going to take and I don't know how much we can get done in five days for students but this is so far we we got in in five days and they did very good I am I'm happy with what what they accomplished so here you can see that top of the rear quarter panel that goes there and it's one piece left to do is to bend this flange and roll that round so it's matching the the, the roof corner and you see the rear quarter panel um, everything is done with English wheel bead roller and shrink and stretcher so it's uh, and as you know before my technique is quiet so most of the time so I can teach and I can talk to people and I think that is important that they can they can hear they have question to answer I would say question for me and I can answer the questions and uh, everybody can listen to each other so I think that is important that we can communicate with each other. We are also using those strong magnets that I cannot find so far in United States but I'm pretty sure that they're going to be available in United States one day. I had them with me from Sweden um, but it really helps to hold the panels temporary together and line up the pieces with the right gap and so on and I can tack weld it together so it's more solid then we can continue to do the ne next piece once we have the whole shell done and tack weld it together then, then I can cut those welds off and grind that and then it's smooth so I prefer to do the whole outer skin first then I can do the inner structure if it's anything and the door jams uh, the door frames I can I can go ahead and do that later on but that's the way I do it but it doesn't mean that that is the correct but it's working for me or working for my students so let's take a little look inside what's going on there so you can see what I have done there here you can see a, a video about the jig that I made 
it's a little hard to see when I have everything on here, but I made a jig from original holes on the frame and uh, I put flat bars there and then I continue making the jig up to the four corners of the deck lid that I bought. I'm going to film so you can see from the front and you can see it maybe a little bit better there. Um, but this is a solid jig so this one I can I can remove if I want and uh, I can use it for this car and um, it, it, it's necessary to have a zero point to build everything around. I don't know how to do it without that. The car wouldn't be straight, it wouldn't be symmetrical and all kinds of different things. So it really helps. So it, it's many, many, many hours to make that jig to find out what to, to get it in the right spot. That that's I've changed it many times. <clears throat> Maybe I wasn't good to do it, but <clears throat> anyway, it is um, there now and it works. So let's take a little look at some other um, things inside. Here you can see the jig inside. So this one comes up to the front right corner and the other side is the front um, left corner. It doesn't matter how, how the jig actually looks like, but it needs to be rigid and it need to always when you build something like that it needs to be square uh, so you can measure it so uh, it's easy to make it square from the beginning and all the way to the top then you can always check it and you have a reference what it is this is the just temporary brackets that i put on here so i could adjust the the height of the roof so i got the right thing there then you see the X member here, so that is the width of, of the car and you see that I have turnbuckles here, turnbuckle there and I could adjust from the beginning, I could adjust that in and out and once that was established then I could make it solid and you also have down on the bottom you have um, how wide it is from the the distance from the subrail and out to the rear quarter panels and the doors. Here you can see the 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 rod that I put in here for the width of the car, and then I have an X member there too, and I had the turnbuckles there so I could adjust the width from the beginning. And uh, once that is is adjusted, then I can weld it in the in the X there so it's solid. I also made a jig from the firewall out so I could mount the windshield frame in the right spot. And of course when you, when you build something like that it's very difficult to find the right spot especially when I have a fiberglass body to, to measure from. Fiberglass body is never correct so we needed to adjust this with a quarter inch and move the, the windshield frame a little forward and I can also adjust it on the height here up and down so I made that rod from the bottom and then I had an old thread here and two nuts then I could adjust that and I can measure from here down to the floor so I got that correct there it's very important that you when you build a body that everything is square so when you look from the front view of the car it needs to line up with the rear window and the, the top of the roof there that need, when you look from the front you need to have that in, in, so that is is level on, on both of them um, if if I build a car body and I ending up with some small dings here and there I can always fix that that is easy to fix but if the body is built crooked so the windshield is this way the roof and the rear window is the other way you can never fix that that is you're done it's you need to cut that body apart and see if you can fix it so um for me that is more important to build it so it's square then small things small imperfections i can always take care of that that is easy to do 
but um, if it's if it's crooked then it is done you're done here's a view from the front so you can see this this edge of the windshield frame and you can line it up to the back of the car there I hope you can see that on the video if it's difficult to see but then at least you you know what I'm talking about that this needs to be in level need to be lined up with the other one in the back there so the car the body is is built straight so this is what uh, what we did in in five days for students uh, on the frame there you can see a pile of pieces that I cut out I grind all the edges so everything is smooth it's very important that you start with the good good pieces that it's cut out nice and grind nice because you're going to use the edges either with the shrinker or the stretcher or the bead roller or the English wheel and those edges are a reference for, for you uh, in each each machine and it's very important that that is smooth if those are cut out the whole thing the whole process is going to be rough all the pieces going to be rough so here is a window door frame um, that I made before the class so I could get a little idea how to do it and it came out I'm happy really happy with it you can see here that um, I actually welded a 90 degrees angle to this one in so this is flat to the the window and I can put that on the table and I can make sure that that it is flat to the table then I know that it will work for the window so there's going to be a weld here so I need to be a little careful when I weld that so I don't get too much distortion so I'm probably going to weld a little bit check hammer and all a little bit weld it a little bit more make sure that I don't change the whole shape of it it's better to do it a little bit and then check do a little bit and check and make sure that the window the whole thing the whole piece doesn't be twisted or something like that then it can be very difficult to know where it is but if I do a little bit and then adjust that check do a little bit more check so it's probably a little time consuming but it's it's uh, it's possible to do on that car here we bent this flange in 90 degrees it's going to be bent 180 degrees and um, so that means that uh, this edge is not bent yet but it, it's fun to be able to do that in in just two pieces so here is a view of the the back of the car the back of the body and um, so <clears throat> my zero point was here that um, I have a spreader bar on the frame mounted a brand new tank and I know what the gap going to be at least plus minus but uh, be between the tank and the this um, panel below the deck lid then I can sit that and then around here the the, the the cap so I know where that's going to be front and back very close and then uh, the height I had that so then that means that I was up here and I could make temporary bracket from the frame and up so I could hold this piece there then I could put the skin to this panel and get the gap between here and I could take a flat piece of sheet metal I would say flat bar or sheet metal between there the thickness of the gap that I want and I could clamp those pieces together then I got one unit one piece all the way up to here and when I went looked at this flow here from, from this panel to the deck lid all I needed to do is to find out the height of the front of the deck lid. Once I find out that one, or at least I am close, and then I could work from there and we could build everything around there. So now I have a solid jig for that. So maybe in a later video I can 
remove the deck lid and you can see the jig but I think I have the jig for the 33 Roadster so you can see it in another video as well so there you can see the rear window so it's um, it is fun so if you like the video here um, build something and uh, have fun so that was the end of the video for the 32.3 winter coupe and uh, we're going to build another one next week so uh, i hope i can we can get a little more done on that one and uh, because i know more and uh, i think we can get more done and i will get back with the video for that uh, but i also like to show you a little more and i like tools I like equipment and I like to have the knowledge to use it as well. So here I have, I put them like this so you can see them from that view. Uh, th this is pliers that I imported from Sweden and they're using it for around roofing, sheet metal stuff around roofing on on houses in Sweden and they are or in Europe I will say they are from Europe so they are not only from Sweden but I like them and um, um, it's good to have them I'm not using them every day but when I need that specific one then it's good to have one so we will see how I like it if I like them and it works great for me and I see uh, purpose for them to have them then I may be going to import more from Sweden but I have one more thing to show you so what is this <laughs> killer tools okay it's not what you may be thinking at first but let me open this one so you can see what what's, what's in here To measure things with a tape measure, yes, it, it is. Uh, that's what I had used for years. But I, I would like to have something that is more rigid and more precise. So one student from Livermore took my class a few weeks ago, and he brought one of those over. He had a collision repair shop before, and he brought this over, and uh, I liked it, so I ordered one. And you can find them on Amazon, you can find them on, on eBay as well. But it is a, I don't remember exactly the name, but you can adjust this one and you can measure between points. And you have a tape measure here, so it, it's, you, you can see how much that is. I think they have it digital now, but I think they are more expensive. So this one is, is actually really, really good I, I really like it so if I want to measure between two points yeah, in this box here in this bag here comes with four different pins and I can set that one and so I have two points so that is very helpful if you if I want to measure for example from the firewall to the jig that I made on the 32 Ford I can be more precise to set that jig and make sure that the firewall is straight and I can measure that I can also cross cross measure it inside the car or in any points where I need to have a more precise measurement instead of a of a tape measure but it is it is um, Pretty, pretty long too so you can see that how long that is I think it's good even for for measure between uh, front wheel and rear wheel on a car on a hot rod 
So I think this is going to be very, very um, useful for me. I would like to have one that is a little, little point this way. So this pointer should be this way so I can measure exactly between two points. So I'm probably going to invent this a little bit and make it so I have the pointer there. And make sure that the tape measure is still working on the same uh, point. So that's what I had for today. So um, if you like what you see here and you still would like to learn more, subscribe and I will get back to more videos in the future. If you want more information about the step one and the step two classes and would like to build a car body like we do in the classes, and go to www.lassymetalshaping.com. Thank you so much for watching and see you next time.